There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hey, I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money. And today we're talking the super easy three ingredient budget. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. I love doing podcasts about budgeting, and that may seem weird because so many people hate the word budgeting, and I can completely understand. I mean, there were definite times in my past where the thought and the idea of budgeting was just you know, like evoked all of those negative emotions that you think of when you think of budgeting, of of limiting, of, um, you know, I'm working from a place of not having enough. And it's really been, I think, some some shifts that I've made in my own personal finances over the years. And then just working with a lot of people about budgeting and like really figuring out, you know, what is it that makes people tick? And and what is that thing about budgeting that just really turns people off? And, you know, I'd like to think that I've really honed the art of budgeting. And, you know, I always try and to teach this a bunch of different ways. I know that I've, uh, you know, done podcasts on budgeting, a ton of podcasts over the last three years on this, on this podcast about budgeting. And, I'm always trying to come up with like a fresh new way to talk about it, but also, you know, something that feels approachable and is easy for you to to wrap your hands around. And I think, you know, if if you remove all the negativity about budgeting and all of the stereotypes that we think about kind of as a society and you just think about times in your life where maybe you felt like you were in a good spot financially. And I'm not talking about, you know, a time where you made a ton of money necessarily, but a time where you really felt, you know, like, okay, I've got things, you know, a little bit under control. I feel like I'm getting somewhere, like I'm, I'm getting in a direction that I want to be. Uh, I think you'll find that during those times, you are actually doing a lot of budgeting without maybe even knowing that you were doing budgeting. And I think that's like kind of the secret trick is that, you know, when you can talk yourself out of or talk yourself down from a ledge, especially when it comes to budgeting, you can really put yourself kind of in this like sweet spot in this 
zone where you are able to make progress towards a lot of different goals that you have in your life almost without you cognitively knowing you're doing it. But then I think, you know, when we when we put that hat of like, okay, we now we have to start budgeting. You know, it's the beginning of the month. I have to do my budget. You know, when we start framing money around that kind of language, that that is really where it starts to like all unravel. It starts to all fall apart. And it really is, I think, where like the tidal wave of negative emotion towards a lot of this comes up, you know, and we go back to those places of well, uh, I don't like to budget. Budgeting is a bad thing. Budgeting is what people do when they don't have a lot of money. You know, kind of all of those those uh, mind games that we play with ourselves to talk ourselves out of the act of actually doing something that will really help us move forward. You know, I hope that makes sense because um, I'm, you know, I'm guilty of it myself. Like there are certain times during the year and, you know, we're coming up to tax time and that's the time of year where, uh, I always feel like a little bit bogged down, you know, being an entrepreneur, dealing with a lot of different 1099s and, you know, having to pile all my like expenses together and really think this through. Like, it's just a time where I feel like frustrated, you know, it's like, okay, I would rather do absolutely anything than pull all the stuff I need to pull together for tax time. But, you know, I got to do it and it's important. And then when I actually do it, like when I don't, you know, sit down and, and I'm not like, okay, this is the time I'm going to do taxes. But when I just casually do it over time and, you know, before I know it, like at the end of, you know, a few days or a week, like I've completed the whole entire process, but I've never actually framed at a time where I'm like, wait, this is the time I'm dedicated to our taxes. Now, that might sound a little misleading because sometimes we need to do that, right? Sometimes like we get our back up against the wall, especially when it comes to taxes and we absolutely have to get the act done, you know, and then that is about that time where, you know, you need to take care of that stuff. But, you know, I, I think about managing your money and about budgeting and about all of these things that that maybe we've convinced ourselves are really difficult, but they're not actually that difficult, you know, and there's a lot of mystery around budgeting, but really at the core, it is a super, super simple process of literally just keeping track of your income and more importantly, keeping track of your expenses. At, at the root of it, it's nothing more than that. And yet, you know, what I what I find is that we just really overcomplicate this. And for some reason, most of us has, have grown up under the impression that budgeting takes this massive amount of time every month and that is just going to somehow suck you dry of like, every ounce of fun and creativity and excitement that's going on in your life. And I'm here to burst that bubble because that is absolutely not true. And I can tell you from personal experience, let me just throw out the expert side in me right now. I am the type of person who, um, I, when I have to be super, super detail oriented, I am, but I am much better being the big picture thinker and coming up with big ideas and how do we move the needle and all of those things are, I think, qualities and traits that are just built into me. You know, I, ha I had to really learn how to do the detail part and to be focused on the detail part. But one thing for sure that I learned very, very early on when I created a business in college was how to uh, be extremely resourceful with the cash that I had because I was running a business and, you know, I only had a certain amount of money every year that I could allocate towards the business. I, I wrote, it was a nonprofit and I rose money every year. Um, and, uh, you know, so there was just a specific amount of money that I had to execute that, that year for for the company and I had to be super, super resourceful. And sometimes that meant, you know, making choices with my finances, both with the business finances and with my personal finances. And I didn't know at the time, but I was really honing the skill that I think now allows me to look at budgeting and teach budgeting and talk about budgeting in a very different way than most people do because I don't come from that that standard 
kind of textbook approach. I come from a real a real life approach, but also I come to you as a person who is more creative, who is um, you know, more interested in figuring out how do I utilize the cash that I have to get where I want to go? You know, I can't suddenly um you know, download an extra million dollars into my account. If I could, I would, and I would certainly teach you how to do it. So I've got to work with what I've got available right now to me, but I don't want to be limited as well with what I've got available to me. Meaning if I'm smart with that, if I, if I um, am resourceful with that, I can somehow take what I've got and I can stretch it and mold it and reshape it and reform it in order to achieve a lot of different things that I want to achieve. And, you know, it took me a while to realize that that was an actual talent that I had, that I had shaped and honed at a very early age, because I thought, well, doesn't everybody know how to do this? Um, And I realized, no, they don't. And then I also realized, you know, that when you take this different approach to budgeting, suddenly you're, you're, brain opens up in a different way, you know, you're, dare I say, more excited to do this process. And it becomes more interesting because instead of you looking at the cash that you have as limiting, you start looking at the cash that you have is actually a great resource to fund all the things that you want to do. Now, Again, like I'm not going to be able to go buy a yacht and sail off in Saint Tropez and live happily ever after. That's not a reality for me. If it is for you, I'm just really hoping that you invite me on your boat because I would really like to go sailing in Saint Tropez. But I digress. Um, but what I can do is I can look at what I've got, and through my very very simple and easy three ingredient budget approach each month. I can figure out how to make that work the best way for me. I hope that makes sense. And, you know, I really wanted to focus on simplicity and and easy because I think when you can change that switch in your brain to budgeting can be simple, I swear to you, that is the place where absolute magic can happen. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So, how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R N I N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T A L K A N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T O S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. 
finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash ETM. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Want to know the number one money question I'm asked? It's how to get started investing without being overwhelmed. So if you're asking yourself the same question, then you have to check out the Investing for Beginners podcast. The hosts, Dave and Andrew, they break down investment terms and strategies in a way you can finally understand. I love that they're making investing accessible and they have an entire podcast dedicated to helping you invest better. Even if you're not ready to start investing, they explain the stock market and financial updates so you can really understand what is being said on the news. If you're ready to learn more about investing, I'd recommend you start with two of my favorite episodes. Listener Q&A, how do you start investing with a thousand bucks, where they explain how you get started right away, and back to basics of building your portfolio, where they explain how to build a portfolio from scratch. The Investing for Beginners podcast is a great way to start expanding your relationship with money. Find Investing for Beginners podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too, and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com slash wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value. All right, so let's dive into these ingredients. So the first ingredient is what's the cash that you're working with? All right, whatever you want to call that, whether you want to call that income, um, I like to call it what is the amount of cash in your bank account that you have available to figure out what the heck to do with during that month or during that week, depending on how you like to purchase. Now, some people, uh, a month is a really long time period for them, and they'd rather figure out this money thing you know, over a weekly basis. That's cool. Whatever works for you. There's no rules with this stuff, really. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit of molding and shaping like you're playing with Play-Doh, right? So we start with the dough, which are these ingredients, but then you can make the shape however you want it to look. You can use whatever system you want to use. You know, if you have the ingredients and you have the right kind of switch in your brain, it doesn't matter how you put the Play-Doh together, right? All right, so ingredient one's the easy part. It's the cash that we've got to work with, right? And how often do we get a surplus of that cash? Do we get it that once a month? Do we get that every other week? Do we get that every week? What does that look like for us? Just 
for you to have that in your brain because that's going to help shape when we put the other two ingredients in the mix. So ingredient number two is what do you got to pay? What do you have to pay? What are the things that you absolutely have to pay? And if you've never written out a list, great, now is the time to do it, right? And if you have written out a list before, you're like, you know what, I know all of the things I got to pay every month. It's kind of a good exercise to just sit down and write it all out again, write out what it is and then how much it costs, right? Just visually, just humor me with this because visually is something that is really, really powerful when it comes to giving your money direction. So with ingredient two, we've got kind of two steps. So we've got number one, what do you got to pay? Stuff that you got to pay. If you don't pay these things, it's going to be bad news, right? You're going to go to collections. um, It's going to ding your credit report. So things like rent, mortgage, car payment, minimum credit card payment, student loans, other loans that you have, car insurance, stuff that you absolutely have to pay. All right. And then tally that up. What what just, what's that number? And then we've got the second question. The second part of that is, what are you going to do with the rest, right? So hopefully with what cash we've got, you know, and the stuff that we've got to pay, hopefully we've got something left over, right? So with what's left over, what are we going to do with that? right? Are we going to spend that on going out to eat? Are we going to spend that on going to concerts or going to movies or getting our hair done or getting our nails done? Or like, where is that extra cash going? Or is it going towards, you know, extra payoff for our student loan or extra payoff for our credit cards? What are we doing? We need to give that a little plan, a little direction. It doesn't have to be set in stone, but you know, we just got to have a little idea of where that's going. And then ingredient number three is how much do you have to put towards your goals with what's left, right? So after you've kind of figured out what you're doing with the rest, like some of those fun things you like to do, going out to eat, all those those kind of things, what's left? What do we have left towards what we can we can put towards our goals, right? So if you can find better ways to lower those rest of expenses, those variable things, those things that are up and down, backwards, forwards every month, If you can find better ways to do some of those things, like, I don't know, cut the cord on cable, um, negotiate a better cell phone plan, um, you know, carpool rather than spending gas every day, you know, all of those little tricks, the more you can lower those extra, those rest of expenses, the more you have towards your goals, the more you can direct towards all right, my number one goal this month is to pay off an extra $1,000 towards my student loan. Great. Um, You know, I'm trying to save for a new car. So my goal is to save an extra $250 a month. Great, right? So the point is, with these three ingredients, you don't need to be a math major. You don't need to be a budgeting whiz. You don't need to have savvy, sophisticated programs. You just need to think about what I got in the bank account, what has to go out, what's my plan for the rest, and how can I carve out a little from that, or maybe a lot, and put it towards my goals. Now, the trick is, if you're saving towards any of these goals that you want to achieve, set up separate savings accounts. Because if you leave that extra cash in your bank account, I can guarantee you what's going to happen. It's going to float away. It's going to go through the suction cup drain that all extra money does in our bank account. It just vanishes into thin air. So you want to make sure that you powerfully direct that money in the direction that it needs to go, almost as if it was never in your bank account to begin with. Not only does that help you kind of retrain your brain that it's making a priority towards saving towards those goals or paying off that debt or whatever that is for you, but I guarantee you after doing that for a couple months, you're not going to miss that money. You you really aren't, right? Because your brain's going to go, that money's not even in my account anyway, so it's not that big of a deal, but it's still your cash. It's still you're still saving it someplace or you're paying off the debt, like you're still making progress with that, right? And whatever system you use to manage your expenses to figure out, uh, you know, what you got left after the stuff you got to pay, that's 
that's for you to figure out. You know, you could do, there's so many great apps out there. You could use, you need a budget. You could use Clarity Money. Um, you could use Q Capital. You could use so many different apps. You could literally just open the notes section on your phone and every day just make a small note of all the things that you're spending your money on. At the end of the week, take a look at it. Take a look at where you're spending the majority of your money. That's going to help you come up with a plan. It's going to help you figure out whether you're spending money, too much money, someplace where maybe you could powerfully redirect that. And all that is is just visualizing uh, where cash is going. You could print off your latest bank statement and you know grab some highlighters and a glass of wine and a beer and sit down and just highlight your categories and figure out where your cash is going that way. You could use an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you could use post-it notes. You can use absolutely anything that you want to use. There's This is the part where there is no rules, where you get to make the craziest Play-Doh animal that anybody has ever seen, right? This is where you, your personality, h- how you work best needs to come out. Because if you can find something that's super easy, as easy as these three ingredients, you can do this process in less than 20 minutes a month. I guarantee it, right? Um, I think my budgeting process takes about between 15 to 17 minutes a month. And, uh, you know, every month I'm redirecting all that rest of money into goals. Now, does it work out great every single month? No, of course not. Like, that's the reality, you know? Uh, I can talk to you about budgeting all day long, but I'm going to be super honest with you as well and let you know that some months it just doesn't work out very well. Some months it's like, all right, crap. Well, we're going to try that again next month. And that's cool. That's that's just like part of the process of of doing this stuff, of, you know, managing your money. But the key is, is that you get back in that game, right? You're not defeated. You know the tools, you know the ingredients, you know the steps, you have your tracking mechanism, and you just do it better next month, right? Or maybe there was an expense that came up this month that just like hit you out of the blue, completely out of the blue, and it just screwed everything up for the month. Um, I've had that happen a lot of months. Like last year, it was just kind of like one medical bill after the next. And I thought, all right, this is just laughable now because, you know, while I was grateful to have the extra cash to pay off the medical bills, it was just kind of like, all right, so this is the year of medical bills, I guess. And next year will be the year of uh, putting extra money towards certain goals. But sometimes that happens. Sometimes that's the year and sometimes that's what it looks like. And, you know, there's no shame in that. Like this is, this is real life stuff, you know, and I want, I want you to know that. But what I want you to know also is that it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to take a long time. It doesn't have to be stressful for sure. It doesn't have to frustrate you. It doesn't have to be on the bottom of the list, like taking out the trash. This is something that if you can get even just these three ingredients down, I this is so powerful. It's so powerful for you now. It's so powerful for your future. And it is going to help you get where you want to go faster than ever. Because not doing this, and I have seen tons of people I've worked with and not worked with, not do this. People who make a lot of money, people who don't make a lot of money. And it's like, they're on, you know, the hamster treadmill, just keep going around and around and around. Can't figure out how do I get out of the hamster treadmill? Well, you got to do step number two. You got to know what you got to pay for. But more importantly, you got to know what you're doing with the rest. And you got to become super resourceful with finding ways to do the rest of expenses in a better way. And when you do that, there's going to be powerful shifts. It is going to blow your mind. You are going to be running to like all your friends and you are going to be saying like, this is the best thing that has ever happened to you. I promise you that. All right, so we got three steps. They're in the show notes again in case you forget. Make this your own, but have fun with this. Be creative. This is your money. You work really hard for your money. So, you know, Get a little, uh, get a little dirty. Get a little, little sweat on your brow, and uh, figure out how to powerfully direct your cash. As always, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Shauna Game. And if you love this podcast, hey, do me a favor: share it with your friends, shout it out on social media, 
and head on over to the link in the show notes to leave us a five-star review. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger. Offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done.